Asheville, North Carolina has college basketball universe this week, and it continues today. It's a battle of Bulldogs here in Kimmel Arena on the UNC Asheville campus as the home team takes on South Carolina State. And hi, friends, and welcome in with Richmond Weaver. Pete Yannity with you. It'll be the first time in action for UNC Asheville since a couple of tough losses last weekend to UNC Wilmington and then to Western Carolina. Mike Morrell says the schedule setup really doesn't bother him. He just wants to see his team continue to work into the groove in the early season. And, and that's not uncommon for all college basketball teams right now. It's trying to find a rhythm. There are a lot of drugs that from UNC Asheville, just they haven't even been able to shoot from the three-point line like they normally do. Let's focus in on a couple of key players in the ball game today. South Carolina State has pretty much turned over their roster. Well, they've got a freshman they're looking to get a lot of good work out of, Latavian Lawrence at 6'6", and he's a Palmetto State native. Yes, he is, and right now he's leading the team in rebounding, uh, second in uh, terms of scoring, and he's their three-point shooting guy, even the six player. And for UNC Asheville, sophomore Jamon Battle had a big game last week as well, the home team nearly came all the way back and won against Western Carolina. And they wouldn't even been in a position if it wasn't for uh, Jamon Battle and what he was able to do, just his explosiveness, his aggressiveness, and just being able to crash the offensive side of the glass. And he is certainly a good-looking player at 6'5", 2'10". Let's give you our TD Bank keys to the game. Now, for South Carolina State, it's all going to be about protecting the basketball. They're averaging 22 turnovers in their last two games. And they only had nine turnovers in their first game. And for UNC Asheville, it's what we talked about, how important it's going to be for them to get into an offensive rhythm. And they've really got to improve on their free throw shooting and their three-point shooting this game. Opening tip, Evan Claiborne of UNC Asheville winning it against Lawrence. We're underway. Great to have you on board on this Saturday afternoon. And Trent Stephanie on the attack. And a blocking foul will be called. We expect to see an aggressive style on both ends. SC State has adapted to a get it up and down the court kind of thing. And if you watch UNC Asheville, you know that Mike Morrell likes to play a 94-foot game as well. That is all about similarities between the two Bulldogs here is that both teams are going to want to push it and also try to put some defensive pressure full court on uh, the, uh, the opposing team. Stephanie in a sophomore season really adapting to the role as the guy to run this attack for the Bulldogs. Now 9 out of 13 through his first two-plus games from the line. And he was the only bench player from last year that played in all 31 games. So he's got some experience, and he's uh, expecting some big things this, this season as a starter. Floyd Rideau for SC State. First field goal of the game for the Bulldogs, who come in, as you saw, at 0-3. Wednesday night, they got a pretty good uh, look at themselves in reality when they faced a very good Clemson team and lost decisively in Little John Coliseum and the turnover against Battle. And Rideau is definitely one of those bright stars for South Carolina State. Uh, as a freshman from Florida, I think there's going to be an opportunity for him to really showcase what type of player he is, averaging almost seven points per game early in this uh, young season. They have several freshmen who see a lot of minutes. That's one of them with the ball. And again, left of the basket, Gideon, their big man from Miami, can't get the roll. Scrap for the basketball to come over to UNC Asheville, which comes into the game, forcing 14 and a half turnovers a game. They want to get that number up. Plus minus is a big statistic for Mike Morrell, their head coach, and they're way down through their first two games as to where they will be. Nice feed by Stephanie, the jam by Claiborne, but wave it off as an offensive foul is called as Stephanie is rung up for the charge. Now, I think Mike Morrell will be okay with that. That was great penetration, great recognition, find the open man, but just a good heady play uh, by Gideon there uh, for South Carolina State. And the steal. And that's what we talked about. They are going to apply pressure. They want to get in the defensive passing lanes. And then there's Stephanie uh, showcasing how much he's improving this year, hitting the big three. The sophomore out of Knoxville has all four points for the home team so far. Wrapping pressure. They really hope to. The freshman Folks and the SC State Bulldogs. And this is what we talked about with South Carolina State. This is going to be imperative for them to be able to handle this type of pressure. They are a young team. 75% of their minutes for this season are coming from 
freshman and sophomore. So <laughs> they are a very inexperienced team. Battle picking up his first personal. Bulldogs had 10 seniors on their roster a year ago, the FC State Bulldogs. And with all of the offseason issues that so many teams experienced, they had to bring in a young core but didn't have the proper spring, summertime preparation. Yeah, nobody's to really get had guys time ready. at all. Yeah, nobody's had time at all, Pete. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy how some of these teams are not even practicing the same amounts because of different issues. And there we can see Gideon with a nice turnaround jump. And pulls in their loss at Clemson the other night. Even up at four apiece in the early going. These teams played a thriller down in Orangeburg a year ago in overtime. SC State came away with a five point win. Battle. Claiborne, Stephanie into the corner. And Tajon Jones knocks down the tray. He's been the best so far for this Bulldogs team. And look at the steal by Jones as he comes away with his first takeaway of the season. And once you can make a basket like that, you can get in your defensive full court pressure and create some turnovers. And that's, that's what we saw. But now UNC Asheville gives it right back. Battle called for the travel. Still a reasonably young UNC Asheville. Mike Morrell has had many of the same faces in his starting lineup or on his roster for the first two plus seasons. He's been the head coach here. He had an extremely young team two years ago when he took on the head coaching assignment, forcing the action inside. It won't go down for Well, UNC Asheville has six returning starters, so they do have experience, but Right now, uh, Devon Baker and Cody Jude have not been able to play uh, this season, so those are two key guys because of injuries haven't been able to see any action. Lawrence for SC State picking up his first personal. Stephanie always ready to go with that basketball. Rebound coming down to Lawrence. Here comes SC State pushing the pace. Gideon, reverse. Goal 10 will be the call against Jamon Battle. Goal 10. Yeah, you could see the ball hit the backboard, and then he tried to make the block. See Golton. We talked about it, I believe, on last week's telecast. People don't necessarily like to be pressed, and that time Thorpe trying to split defenders. Take away, finish, Lawrence on the jam, and a nice feed by Floyd Rideau. And you can see South Carolina State right now, they're very aggressive in their own press. And as you mentioned, it's such an interesting thing that you would think because a team is going to be practicing against itself being pressed that they would be comfortable with being pressed. But it's not the case. It, it's one of those anomalies in college basketball. Famous Fultz picking up his first personal before the ball was even inbounded. We have gotten the back and forth kind of game that we expected so far here in the first nearly four minutes of action. L.J. Thorpe, he can also run the point. And at 6-5, that could be a real asset. Inside Jones, nice turnaround. One-hander, he's got five quick points. And you can see early on right now, UNC Asheville, they see offensively. They hit two early three-pointers and now are able to uh, focus on getting it inside in the paint with some nice backdoor cuts. On the attack, Gideon, B.J. Marable called for the reach-in. Off the bench, Marable picking up his first. Now the team fouls are even up. Part of your keys to the game and what we've talked about coming into this ball game, if you're FC State, you want to play with pace, but with a young team, it's so hard, I would think, Richmond to play with pace under definitely and I think they're even at a position right now just trying to figure out their rotation and so when you're trying to do that it's very difficult to even play with pace because you have such a different style with each player out there from the left wing Rideau able to knock down the tray he was just 29 percent coming in beyond the arc and it's back out to a two-point advantage for SC State We've had nearly half a dozen lead changes here in the early going. LaVar Batch just in, dumping inside, taken away by Gideon. And there he's got a 
fake the pass up and then bounce pass inside right there right, rather than trying to uh, pass over the top. Five turnovers. Are Asheville and making him pay is Seamus Folks out of Winston-Salem back in his home state. Little runner. And the biggest lead so far for SC State. Bats who likes to force the action. A feed instead. Battle and one. Rideau picking up the personal. And that's the second on the freshman out of Lake Wales, Florida. Early on, the kind of pace we expected. Not even five minutes gone. The teams have combined for 24 points so far. Ingalls College Basketball coming to you from UNCA. We come back after this. This Big South broadcast is brought to you by Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. Visit HerculesTires.com. By Geico. 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit Geico.com today. And by Sunbelt Rentals. We have equipment for that. With Richmond Weaver, Pete Gannity, at UNC Asheville. We expected pace. We've gotten it so far. SC2. An opportunity for Jamon Battle to bring his team a little bit closer. Yeah, now I think the biggest thing right now is what we're seeing is South Carolina State's come out here and they seem to be the aggressor and uh, six of nine from the field right now. And this is considering South Carolina State has been struggling from the field at around 35% this season. Three point play for Battle. Bats the steal. No look inside and it's taken away by the Bulldogs, Rasan Edwards. And Bats showcasing just, again, why he led the Big South in steals last year. Long three attempt. Won't go down by Isaiah Felder, who just checked in, but a foul on the rebound. And Jones is very frustrated there that him and Maribald uh, collided, which caused the turnover. But that's just both of them at least being aggressive on the defensive side of the board. It'll stay in SC State's end. South Carolina State, part of an early season stretch of road games for them that we'll talk about a little bit later. Pull-up jumper, Edwards can't get it to go. A year ago, he scored just a couple in the five-point overtime win for SC State against UNC Asheville. Jones off to a good start, and a reach-in foul will be called. A uh, hand check. Hard to defend that. Jones is pretty quick and a little bit lanky with that first step. He, he, he can get past people. Omar Krosky picking up the fifth foul. He stayed in his first, and Jones can be so difficult to defend at 6-6, even though Krosky is about that tall, but Jones, and for that matter, Thorpe, with their size, able to work on the perimeter. Big matchup issues for a lot of mid-major teams. Definitely. And again, just with South Carolina State, they're inexperienced. They're trying to learn how to play you know, these teams and play within themselves as well. Contact as Thorpe went to the basket, and the blocking foul will be called. Sean Edwards picking up the person. And they definitely need him out on the court, the Edwards, that is. He's a leading scorer for the South Carolina State Bulldogs this season. So, some foul. And not even six minutes into the game, they're on the verge of putting UNC Asheville in the one-in-one -one bonus. Bats and Stephanie Marable on the cut. Nice find by Stephanie. Silas Mason unable to follow. And the ball coming down to Felder. Pushing the pace. Gets it ahead. Hard foul under the basket. And I think we're going to be able to see in a true advantage for UNC Asheville on the rebounding side. Currently right now, South Carolina State, they're at a minus 16 rebounding margin. So they're not that type of team that can really hit the boards that hard. Omar Krosky, first free throw attempt of the season for the sophomore out of Sumter, barely grazing the rim after LeVar Bats picked up his first personal foul. So there's the head coach of SC State, Murray Garvin, trying for his 81st win at the helm in this is ninth season.
few years ago, they had one of the better campaigns they've had this century when they won 19 games in 2016. He knows this is a work in progress for his ball club, but feels like there is some potential here. And his mantra this year for college basketball and his team is stay positive, test negative. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad one at all as once again today in college basketball, several games being called off not long before their scheduled tips. Silas Mason. Mason. Nice drive to the basket by the big fella for UNC Asheville. We're tied up at 14. And Mason is a long athletic wing and three-star athlete. Uh, he's got some promise for Mike Morrell for sure. Folks working out high. UNC Asheville, primarily a man-to-man -man defensive team. Kick on the wing. Not going to go down that time and out of bounds. Let's see who touched it last. As for Sean Moore, couldn't hit the jumper. It'll go back over to UNC Asheville. You mentioned the rebounding deficit for SC State at minus 16, but Murray Garvin, their head coach, points out that teams pretty much retreat and get into your half-court defense. Offensive rebounding is really down all around college basketball, and it's been that way now for a couple of years. Yeah, it definitely has. And, and also just know that, I mean, just from a perspective that that team in a position where they're not shooting as well either. And, and so that that's uh, the, for these really and then be able to crash the offensive boards because they're so focused on getting back on defense as well. Nearly off the pretty drive to the basket by Bats. Nearly taken away by Bats, who's so scrappy. He was best in the Big South and steals a year ago. And that's the kind of action that the Bulldogs of UNC Asheville like to force defensively. Yeah, and he personifies what Mike Morrell is as a coach in terms of being able to be very aggressive uh, on the uh, steel side of things. And he had 40 points in the game against South Carolina State last year, career high. So you know he's wanting to come out here and perform. Mason fouled as you saw the big man running the floor well. That'll be against Edwards, and that'll be number two on him. So here in the opening half of play, he is the second SC State player to get to two personal fouls. So Silas makes one area where Seattle at the line in their first two games, 58% in the loss against UNC Wilmington and then 61% against Western Carolina. Had a chance to talk to Mike Morrell, the third year head coach of the Bulldogs. And he's won this week. Well, I, I hope so, considering they were 23 of 38 against Western Carolina in a two-point overtime loss. So you can point to a very specific uh, part of the game that could cause the loss. Runner and a nice job by the freshman folks after they broke pressure. As the free throws continue to be an issue here in the early going. And you can see Coach Garvin he, for South Carolina State, he has some talent. There, there's some young talent. It's Again, it's just their inexperience. Little hop step into the lane. Mason, who really has shown some good athleticism, he is fouled once again. And Lawrence picking up his second for SC State. Free throws on the way for Silas Mason and UNC Asheville once again on the other side of this timeout here at Kimball Arena. Ways to show your appreciation. Oh, yeah. So keep sharing the love, little by little. Tied up at 16, just under 12 to play here at UNC Asheville. A Bulldogs team for UNC Asheville trying to even up this all time series. The first four, and we told you last year down in Orangeburg, back and forth kind of game. Have an overtime by SC State, but last year was such a season of improvement for UNC Asheville that was one of those early learning experiences as they transitioned from a four win 2019 campaign to 15 a year ago. It's a big reason why the Bulldogs, the home team, picked second in the Big South coming into the season as Silas Mason able to put his team back on top. And we talked about how they've got 
for turning starter. So there's a lot of high expectations uh, for this team this year. And, and again, can they you know find some type of offensive rhythm? And we're at least seeing some of that early on, where they have they're shooting six for nine from the field right now. UNC Asheville, three of seven from the line so far. Folks got up in the air, decided to pass, and <laughs> a little extracurricular <laughs> after the shot attempt inside by Kwame Nelson. And I think Claiborne was trying to send a message. Don't come into the paint. The Ypres 15 foul against UNC Asheville. And off the inbound, Thorpe nearly taking it away. And look at the athletic putback try once, and then Gideon unable to get the putback attempt from the left side. Trushan Moore was way up in the air and was had a lot of hang time there, just could not finish the, the putback. Stephanie. Tejon Jones. Coming off a 24-point effort last Saturday against Western Carolina. Shot clock at 7. Thor try to get a jump. Bounds by Brandon Manning, who just checked in for SC State. And you see a lot of that from UNC Asheville. A lot of ball screens and rolling to the basket, trying to get some easy points in the paint. Just wasn't able to connect there with the tip pass. We focused on battle in our open. That's him with the ball inbounding to Claiborne. Not a lot of time to work. Stephanie to the basket. And a little teardrop, a finger roll, rather, as he got to the rim. Oh, are they going to say he didn't get it away in time, or they're going to take a look? They're yeah, I think ahead. they're going to take a look. That was very close. It, it seemed to be that he was able to release it right before the shot clock expired. I think they're going to keep the hoop, but we shall see. They're overlooking at the monitor right now at our broadcast position. Our officiating crew, a good one today, William Humes, joined by Sean Leinberger and Corey Haney. And they have gone to the monitor and are doing that. And the basket is, is good. So Trent Stephanie with the runner, able to build the lead That's out good. to three for UNC Asheville. Stephanie and their girl early going, six points, and that leads all scores. Yeah, he's taking advantage of getting some starting time for Mike Morrell. Pressure inbound, just what UNC Asheville likes to do. And so far, South Carolina State has actually been able to handle, as we about to say, handle the press. They turn it over there, but that's only their third turnover for the game. So in all reality, based on how South Carolina State, as I had talked about, averaging 22 turnovers per game over the last two games right now. So they've been able to at least, uh, you know, protect it to a certain degree, but obviously there, too much pressure from UNC Asheville. Folks, the freshman playing in his fourth collegiate game, and... He has seen some frenetic and team loss at Clemson the other night. They played at the App State team, and that's tough to defend as well. Tejon Jones knocks down his second three so far. He's got eight points. Because you have to be able to keep him on in terms of him too much defensively because he can blow right by you as well. Famous folk. In prep from Winston-Salem. Manning lob inside. Didn't angle it right for Moore. And a good save by Lawson for UNC Asheville. And offensive foul is the call. It as did. an illegal screen set by Evan Claiborne. It did look like Claiborne shifted his body out and uh, raised that shoulder and elbow to call the uh, offensive foul there. First on Claiborne, the grad transfer, began his collegiate career at Cleveland State and then most recently was at North Carolina Central. And he looks like he could play tight end for somebody as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. <laughs> With that 
6'6", 228-pound frame, and he plays a lot bigger than 6'6". They look at him as a real rim protector. Runner no good. And now 7 out of 17 in the game for SC State. Claiborne nearly travels, hop step, count it, and he's fouled. And he was rewarded for running down the court, and a lot of times we see big men that they don't do that, but Claiborne, he, he showcased just his athleticism getting down the court and then being able to do a, a up and under step through and get the basket and the foul. Claiborne, someone that Mike Morrell says gives them the kind of rim defender they didn't have last year. Wasn't all that much of a scorer at North Carolina Central, though a season ago he was 66% from the field, but 12 points and he had in their opener against UNC Wilmington was his career high. From the corner, that's not going to go down that time for Felder. Jones, contact, and the foul will be called a block against Quamaine Nelson of SC State. And now double bonus time for UNC Asheville. And you can see just again just how quick Jones is that just one pass, one ball dribble, and he can get to the hole pretty quickly. You like what you're seeing out of Mike Morrell's team and the number of guys they've been able to play, keeping in mind the two of last year's starter, Cody Jude and Devon Baker. Baker, their top returning player, a first-team all-conference not been available yet. We think we might see Jude at some point today, but once they get them healthy, he's going to have roughly a, about an 11-man rotation he can count on. And you've got to love having that type of depth and the experience that uh, Coach Morrell will have with those guys being able to return. Come into the game, 5 of 10. There's Bats, the steal, the lane, the reverse, and Lawson the tip. Bats all over the court again, showcasing why he led the Big South in steals last year. Over the past three minutes, a 12-0 run for this UNC Asheville team as they have built the lead out to 28-16 over SC State. Kind of a cat and mouse affair for the first eight minutes, but suddenly you can see, I, I think that full court pressure employed by Asheville really starting to get to this SC State team. It definitely did. Now you know, with five turnovers now and also South Carolina State having a little bit more trouble to see Asheville not only just from defense or press, but even in the half court uh, defense, they're putting a lot of pressure on South Carolina State. Now South Carolina State's only 7 of 18 from the field. So Murray Garvin, the SC State coach, calling the timeout. Trying to get a reset, trying to get to the under eight with his team. Able to Runner that time, won't go for Themis Fultz. Good backside. Nelson. Manning inside. Nelson rejected down low. Looked like both Claiborne and Lawson might have gotten a hand on it. It'll stay in the SC State end with 10 on the shot clock. Yeah, that rim protector that you talked about, that was that was Claiborne right there. And Claiborne's that type of guy also. He seems to be the, an enforcer type of player for UNC Asheville. And again, 6'6 six, six is what he's listed at. Plays much bigger than that, but it's the... 228 pounds, and he seems even bulkier than that. Yes, he does. Like I said, he could definitely play tight end for somebody. Manning, four on the shot clock. That's battle defending. And Cody Jude, who just checked in for the first time this year, came out to help. Other end and knocked out of bounds. And UNC Asheville will keep. And it's great to see Cody Jude out there coming battling back from the, the wrist injury. And again, this is a guy that Coach Morrell is going to need to be able to step up this year. Averaged 10 points a game last year, so uh, there will be big expectations for Cody Jude. We saw him number 22, 6'9", 190. There he is in the middle of the lane. 6'9", really, in measurement listing only. I think in his world he thinks he's about a 6'2 guard. Oh, yeah. He, I don't think he ever wants to be down low. Bats tries from the outside, battle for the rebound, and last touch by Manning of SC State. So we'll see if they try to run something next time down the court for Jude, who was a year ago. 
from beyond the arc. And LeVar Bat still just hasn't been able to get going from the three-point line. He hasn't hit a three-pointer this season yet. Gideon handing to folks. That's Gideon with the ball. You see Jude defending the 6'10 Miami native. And see how active you is. Not even on the ball, but even off the ball as well. It's all about getting in the passing lanes, and you can see just how uh, active their feet and hands are. Deep shot clock. They look like they're about to have a violation, but the turnover, the travel called against Gideon, and we arrive at a timeout. We'll take one as well here in Asheville, just under eight to play. The home team in control so far. For bundling made easy, go to geico.com. With Richmond Weaver, Pete Kennedy with you back at Asheville. So a Bulldogs team that likes to force turnovers, and a year ago they were excellent in that. They definitely were. And, you know, when you're looking at being fourth in the nation in turnover margin, 15th in the nation in forced turnovers, you know, it's a team that they thrive on being able to force the turnovers, but they also thrive on protecting the ball as well. They were minus seven in a comparison statistically in their first two games, minus 3.5 in turnover margin entering, but trying to change that today. Bats a nice feed to Lawson. Extra effort, and he'll kick it back out. Lawson, good find underneath. Battle, Gideon defends. Battle, no trouble at all, and he's got five. And the run continues, 14-0. And for you UNC see, Asheville. And you can see, again, just they're being a lot more patient on offense this game, being able to try to get some easy baskets, which then that allows you to get into a rhythm, and then it opens up your three-point shooting, which we've been able to see, and then obviously just the defensive pressure that they've been able to apply to South Carolina State is causing a lot of problems. Turnovers picking up for SC State. That's their seventh. That evens things up. So UNC Asheville will get it back and a chance to build on what is a 14-0 run over the fast five minutes and 17 seconds. Stephanie will give it back to LeVar Betts. And we can see South Carolina State in a zone right now, just trying to change things up because, uh, again, with the type of team that they have, inexperienced, uh, young team, sometimes you know you can get caught up in uh, easy foul trouble when you're playing man-to-man, -man, especially against an athletic team like UNC Asheville. So this be a way that Coach Garvin's just trying to get a little bit of breather uh, for his team. Battle on the over the back. That's the second foul on the swing man for UNC Asheville. You see he'll head to the bench as L.J. Thorpe checks back in. Thorpe's been quiet so far. Among the top scorers on this team a year ago with 13.9 and 22 points in his first two games this season. And Thorpe is preseason second team, all big south. Uh, so he, he's a guy that... Uh, you would expect to get involved pretty early. He's a thick guy, thick guard, kind of hard to defend, uh, but he has been quiet so far. First free throw of the day for Isaiah Felder, who knocks it down. And he can't get that one to go, and Marable, the rebound for UNC Asheville. First points in a while and better than five minutes for SC State. Going for the steal that time was Lawrence. A foul is called. And it'll go against Latavian Lawrence. That'll be number three for him with 625 remaining before the half. And as we talked about, sometimes you get out of the man-to-man -to, -man to protect players that are in foul trouble. But there, they were still in somewhat of a matchup zone there trying to trap. And Lawrence was just too aggressive. Trent Stephanie, his sophomore season off to a good start, came in averaging 12 and a half points per game. Six so far for UNC Asheville. Make it seven, and he's two out of three from the line. Checking in for South Carolina State, number 12, Omar Frosty. 
and a chance to give the home team their largest lead of this opening half. And if you're Mike Morrell, this is one of the games after a week off that you're probably starting to see some of the things that you worked on being applied here. And you know that from a perspective as a coach, can you see improvements each and every game? And right now we are seeing some improvement with UNC Asheville. FC State's gone roughly six minutes on the game clock without a field goal. That's why they trail by 15. We were back and forth over the first eight minutes or so. And I think a lot of that has to do with UNC Asheville just being able to get them out of their game. They came out aggressive, South Carolina State did, but UNC Asheville almost beat them to the punch or took their punch and came back swinging even harder. Bats flies to the rim. Ball taken off the floor by Krosky. SC State 7 of 22 from the field in this opening half. Pull up jumper Rideau and boy wasn't that needed by Murray Garvin's team. Stop the bleeding and Rideau is a guy that I really like. He, he's young, young player. He, he, over the years, he'll add some more weight and you know, be able to be a little bit beefier, but he, he's got some skills that uh, I think are really going to be impactful in the MEAC conference. Thorpe kicking out to Jones. Marable offensive board, and he goes up over the seven-footer Dallas James who just checked in. And the putback by Marable. And the lead back out to 15, and SC State will keep. You see right at the bottom of your screen the instruction from Edwards trying to get his teammates in position to counter this full court pressure. Krosky getting it ahead. And now Felder will restore order. Dump inside. Krosky on Marable and a good job as he didn't overcommit on the baseline. Yeah, great recognition uh, with the fake and then go up with the left hand. Krosky three points in the game. SC State back within 13. Jones feeling it so far, runs into Krosky, and an offensive foul will be the call, I believe, and it'll go against Tajon Jones. That is his first. And that looked very close to the restricted area, to be honest with you. But obviously the ref, ref had a better vantage point than I do. Omar Krosky, who played at Sumter High in South Carolina. They've had a very good program over the years on the inbound into Felder. Krosky has it deflected by Bats. SC State able to clear. Stop and pop. Not going to go down for Edwards. And there's Bats, who once he gets it, goes about 150% speed, if not more, as evidence right there. Lawson able to recover on the loose ball. Stephanie bats in the corner. And Bats still just hasn't been able to get into the rhythm on the three-point shooting. Not Hasn't been able to make one this season so far. Nice job by Gideon on the other end. LeVar Bats coming into this game. One of 12 overall from the field. Underneath, Claiborne reversing on Gideon. So after SC State had pulled within 11, back out to a 13-point UNC Asheville advantage. And you can just see the size right there of Claiborne, just how he could post out. Rideau just the second made three in ten tries for SC State in the game. Just like that, they've cut a 15-point deficit down to ten. Claiborne, hard contact. I think he was waiting for a whistle. Everybody was waiting for a whistle there, and, and the ref, you, if you, you could see the ref just shook him off. Nope, nothing. I'm not calling anything here. Gideon can't get it to go. And I think Claiborne was even surprised that <laughs> there was I think he was called. shocked. Yes, and said, wait a second. All right, I'll just take it up and in right now. Power slam. Claiborne was six. UNC Asheville is led by as many as 15. And the feed inside, nice idea by Claiborne, but he's called for the travel. Well, sometimes the refs don't want to use their whistle as... Evan Claiborne learned moments ago. Gideon hits the deck. Claiborne says, why not? 
and Asheville rolling by a dozen. Back in Asheville and coming up at the half, it's the Geico Halftime Report, which includes our pet of the week. Will it again be a dog this week? And for that matter, from what part of the K-9 family? Stay tuned for the Geico Halftime Report and our pet of the week. As so far, this battle of dogs, bulldogs in fact, and UNC Asheville has been in control for pretty much the past 10 minutes or so of our contest. They've led by as many as 15, trying to get back at SC State for that tough overtime loss that UNC Asheville suffered down in Orangeburg a year ago. Forced by Gideon, good defense that time by Claiborne. Here comes UNC Asheville up by 12. And that's what UNC Asheville does. They force you into thinking that you've got an easy shot, but they can collapse so quickly and make a very tough shot inside the paint. Jones can't get it to go. That's his first miss from outside, but you've got Claiborne and others down low to clean up. Not a bad thing. Again, Claiborne, he's been very active today, and you can see, again, that rim protector side on defense, but also even on the offensive side, being very, very active and being able to get the offensive rebound and take it back up and in. Edwards and Rideau out high getting the attention of Mason. They get it back to him. Rideau has been their best scorer so far with 10, and a foul is called on the floor, and he'll get a chance to add to that. That's the foul number one, Doc Battle, his third team. And that'll be the third on Jamon Battle. Frankly, I was surprised to see him back on the court as he exited with a couple earlier in this half. Now, I think there's an aspect, though, also that early in the season, you, you've got to allow some players to – uh, play even through some personal fouls like that and understand, you know, can you play even when you are in foul trouble? And so I, I think Mike Morrell was uh, hoping that uh, he could keep him out on the court, but obviously picked up that third foul. Rideau unable to knock down the front end of the one and one. Under two to go here in the half. Thorpe, and looks like the wraparound will be called as Isaiah Felder held his ground. It definitely looked like Thorpe as he was making that spin move. He led with the elbow out there. LJ Thorpe called for the personal. Checking back in for Aspel number zero, Lamar Bats. And that's number two on him. Falks, the freshman point guard, defended by Stephanie in the front court. And a foul out high, and they'll get Mason for the reach in. And now a double bonus opportunity. Silas Mason picking up his first personal. Seeing more of him, Luke Lawson saw significant minutes against Western Carolina last Saturday when we were here for a game that turned into a real thriller. It's the Bulldogs rallied from 20 down early on in the second half to take a late lead, eventually falling in overtime. And Rideau trying to add to his effort so far after he was scoreless Wednesday night in their loss against Clemson. Talking to the coaches this morning ahead of the game, and SC State goes on the road, plays some guarantee games. UNC Asheville does as well. That's when you go for a one-time visit to a power six opponent usually. But I think playing against quality mid-majors does even more to get a, a program like a UNC Asheville or an SC State ready for conference play. I agree 100%. And I know there's a financial side uh, to all of that, obviously, and especially in this type of climate right now. But it, there, there's certain aspects that can, when you can play against opponents more uh, close to your level, you can actually get better uh, e each and every game. And uh, obviously, it, we can see some of that happening uh, here. And LaVar Bats, that's got to feel good Finally. for him. Knocks down his first three of the season. And then the steal. Good job by Stephanie Claiborne. Able to corral. Here's Bats. 
Quick pass, Stephanie. Lawson out high. Really good ball movement in the half court with 45 seconds and winding down here in the opening half. And the biggest lead of the game for the Bulldogs of 17. And I actually liked how Bats did not take another quick three, even though he just hit one. Pulled it back out, run a good offense. Uh, but then there, I, I think Mike Morrell would have liked a better shot than what Luke Lawson did right there. You see the differential. Shot clock to game clock, and FC State going to try to hold it for as long as they can. Famous Fultz with the ball out high as Stephanie defends. And you can see how this is how UNC Asheville plays, even defending way out, uh, way beyond the three-point line. Wanting to get into a situation where it calls in a turnover right there with a shot clock violation. Not a bad idea, but he got it to Madol. Too late, so a shot clock violation. Another turnover by SC State. They have nine in the opening half. You see Mike Morrell instructing Stephanie what to do with 2.7 to go before the break. And Bats letting it roll in. I don't think he realized Folks was so close. From midcourt, Bats trying to make it two in a row after hitting his first three of the season just moments ago. So we arrive at halftime here at Kimmel Arena. UNC Asheville and SC State meeting for the eighth time. And at the break, a big lead for the home team by 17, 43 to 27 on Ingalls College Basketball. Monday night. Our GEICO Halftime Report continues here in Asheville. GEICO, save 15% or more on car insurance. Go to GEICO.com. Also brought to you by Pepsi. Proud to be the official beverage partner of the Big South Conference Championships. Don't forget, pick up a delicious, refreshing Pepsi today. Pepsi, that's what I like. With Richmond Weaver, Pete Yannity with you. You see the score atop your screen. UNC Asheville up 43-27. to Let's give you this week's sportscasting trivia question. And it takes us back, oh, nearly 15 years. Back in 2009, UNC Asheville's Kenny George, 7 feet 7 inches. Tallest player ever to play college basketball. And what size shoe did Kenny George wear? You see the selection below, and we will give you... The answer to that coming up as our ball game continues. Yeah, seven feet seven. He was an inch taller than Bridgeport's Manute Bowl, who, of course, stood 7'6 and ended up having a pretty decent uh, run in the NBA. And time now for our pet of the game. We gave you the big preview. Would it be from the canine or feline family or perhaps something else? Well, our pet of the game... As our Geico halftime report continues, first half stats, Tejon Jones had a good 20 minutes. He had 10 points to lead the way. And it was all about getting points in the paint for UNC Asheville. Outscored South Carolina State in the paint 24-12 to in that first half. Attacking the basket, that's what the Bulldogs did throughout. You saw Jamon Battle working inside. The guy they call Doc was operating close to the hoop there. And good effort off the bench by a lot of guys like Silas Mason. Yeah, and he's getting a lot of minutes right now. And, again, you can see just how active UNC Asheville is getting to the paint there with bats with a nice dribble drive and getting an easy basket. I thought it was interesting Mike Morell telling us that he – thinks FC State had played three good halves in their first three games against App State, Bowling Green, and then Clemson. He's certainly hoping that they don't uh, find that to in them here over the next 20 minutes. Well, the easy way to do that is continue to apply that defensive pressure, which we know Mike Morrell loves to do, and create some chaotic situations for a young, inexperienced South Carolina State team. And each of these teams trying to get the first win of the campaign, and for UNC Asheville, they want to protect the home court here. Coming up in just a few days, they head downtown to the Harris Cherokee Center, the arena here in Asheville. Well, they'll take on a good ETSU team at what will kind of feel like a home game, but this is an important ball game to, to bank in the win column. Today. Oh, it definitely is because, again, about getting into a rhythm. We've seen so many teams this uh, preseason not really being able to get into any type of offensive rhythm. Now, it helps with UNC Asheville that – with their defensive pressure that they're always active and sometimes defense can lead to offense. Uh, and so I know Mike Morrell was hoping that a game like this can give, be a springboard for upcoming games. On the attack, heading to the basket was Edwards. Ball knocked out of bounds. 
Krosky, number 12, at the top of the lane for SC State. Starts things out on the floor here in the second half. Gideon came to them from Miami, also played at Florida Southwest Junior College. The hook won't go, and that's Stephanie on the rebound. Again, UNC Asheville just making it very tough. Even when they do get inside the paint, South Carolina State, it's a tough shot. And right there, Gideon maybe should have pulled that back out and kicked it out and get it into another offensive flow. Stephanie working around the screen from Claiborne. Shot clock under 10. Jones has a size advantage on Folks. Looks like he wanted to take advantage of it. Right-hander from the left side off the glass. And not only does he have this, uh, the size advantage there, you can just see just uh, the touch that he has with a nice floater off the backboard. Jones a year ago averaged nearly 14 points a game. He's now scored at least 12 in the first three. And L.J. Thorpe will pick up the personal foul. That's the foul number two, L.J. Thorpe, his third. That'll be his third. And coaches know that when you are a defensive pressure team like uh, UNC Asheville is, you're going to have some of those situations where you pick up some fouls like that, maybe being a little bit too aggressive, but that's just part of you know being that type of pressing team that you have to live with that. Rideau, he's shown a nice touch with the jumper. Led SC State in the opening half with 11 points, one of two. Double-figure scores in the game. Pull-up, not going to go down for Folks, but he'll head to the line. That's the foul the five, Trent, Stephanie, Trent Stephanie, Stephanie on the reach-in, picks up his second. At the line for South Carolina State, number zero, Phoenix Folks shooting two. Two quick team fouls on the Bulldogs here in half number two. And Themis Folks, a guy that, his coach said he let him play through his struggles the other night at Clemson, which most young guards are going to struggle against Brad Brownell teams. And a work in progress like so many on this ball club. And, and patience is, is something you, you really have to have if you're Murray Garvin, the head coach at SC State. You definitely do with, again, 75% of the minutes played are coming from freshmen and sophomores. So you're going to have some of those early uh, situations where you're going to be pulling your hair out as a coach. And unfortunately, the coach Garvin, he has no hair, so he might <laughs> already have a situation like that. But it's it's part of the process that happens. And as we can see again, Claiborne is just a monster down low. Evan Claiborne making him pay on the other end. Double-figure scoring game for him. He'll head to the line. Wow. Big-time thunder for the big fella who hails from Dayton, Ohio. And it's great that the uh, backboard has such a big base down there to be able to handle that type of dunk from Claiborne because that was some power. Now to an 18-point lead, and it'll stay that way for UNC Asheville. Folks out high. That's Stephanie defending him. Yeah, and I do like the fact that Coach Garvin does allow some of these players to start, continue to get some experience as we see a, a, a nice up and under reverse layup there. But it's all about the opportunity of getting that experience. And again, another reverse layup there, just transition basket for UNC Asheville. Jamon Battle answering the Nelson bucket with another for him. He has seven points. Rideau off the pump fake. Shed Battle tried to get it inside to Nelson. Scramble for the ball. That's Nelson battling. And a hell ball will be called as Claiborne for UNC Asheville and Nelson were scrapping. And it'll send it. The home team's way. It almost looked like that was the first time I've seen a held ball by two players using their backs to hold the ball. So with the ball and the 18-point lead, just one field goal over the last five minutes on the game clock for SC State. And a foul so called against the, the zero visitors zero zero on the reach in. Folks' second foul. Yeah, and Folks is one of those freshmen getting a lot of minutes, and 
Uh, again, Coach Garvin letting him play and even had struggled. You know, he leads the team uh, in turnovers right now, but that's part of the maturation process. You've got to let these guys uh, get through some of these early experiences. And it'll go the other way. So a turnover by UNC Asheville. Pass ahead to Krosky. Rideau loves the catch and shoot. Thorpe on the rebound. And you can see there, he was more worried about where he was on the court rather than catching and being in position for a shot. It was looking down, and that distracted him from being yeah, in rhythm yeah, to shoot. Pretty obvious there that L.J. Thorpe carried the ball, so a dozen turnovers now on the Bulldogs. They've forced 10 so far in the game, trying to flip that turnover margin. And here comes the trap, trying to create those turnovers that you mentioned. I've got to think Murray Garvin's going to be happy with how his team has broken the pressure. I would agree 100%. I, I think they've done very well getting the ball to the middle of the court uh, and, again, passing more so than trying to dribble through the pressure. Mike and Morrell, you see him top of your screen coaching his team in their half-court set. Claiborne sets the screen for Stephanie. Jones with 10 on the shot clock. Got to be a tough assignment for folks of SC State trying to corral Tejon Jones as we've seen. Thorpe off balance. And a strong rebound inside by Quaymon Nelson. Ahead it goes. Rideau. Give him 13 in the game. The freshman out of Lake Wales, Florida. And again, just some easy baskets. Can South Carolina State continue to get some transition buckets like that? to inch their way back into this game. And again, Rideau is one of those guys that I, I think we're going to see some things in the MEAC from him. Edwards, the run out, and he heard the footsteps of Jones. That would have pulled them back within 14, which doesn't sound like much, but they've trailed by close to 20 here in the second half. Yeah, and I think Edwards hurt his ankle there, too, when he came down after missing that shot. A little gimpy there trying to play some defense. Good idea by Thorpe. Check it back in for Asheville, number zero, the home bats, number 11, B.J. Barrett. L.J. Thorpe will head to the bench. He'll stay in the Bulldogs end, 14 on the shot clock. We've seen each team go deep in their respective bench, as will be the case this year. And a big guy seeing action for the first time this year in the opening half, back on the floor, number 11 for SC State, Magic Madal. They hope he can counter the inside bulk that UNC Asheville has shown so far. Bat strong pass for Jones. Stephanie in the corner. And look at Jones on the offensive glass. And a foul called against SC State. So it'll be a fresh shot clock for UNC Asheville when we come back. Official time out of the court. It's Ingalls College Basketball here in Kimmel Arena. We have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Here in Asheville, same difference in score that we saw at the half as UNC Asheville trying for a fourth all-time win against the SC State Bulldogs from Orangeburg, South Carolina, their fourth game of the season, their third game on the road. And SC State, I actually thought the ball would stay in the UNC Asheville end, and perhaps they reversed the call during the timeout, but right back at it defensively and forcing the turnover once again, Trent Stephanie and the Bulldogs. Stephanie trying to get it over in the corner. Folks with the steal. Good job by the freshman. Blows past the sophomore for the bucket. That's the kind of thing that has them so excited about Themis Folks. Yeah, definitely. And that's why 
Coach Garvin talks about he wants to have these guys play through some of the adversity that they might have just from a turnover perspective, but they're very active, and there, there's got to be some excitement, even though they're struggling at times right now. Uh, but they, they've got some opportunities as they get more experience that they're going to mature as players. Now 15 turnovers in the game for UNC Asheville. They came in averaging 18 a contest. Yeah, and just think that they were only averaging 11 and a half per game last year. So Coach Morrell definitely needs some game, some players to really step up and start protecting the ball. Bats. Jones. Nice idea by LeVar. Bats counted and he's fouled. Quick opportunity there as they turn defense into offense. That is what they do so well. Sean Moore with the foul. First on the senior out of Somerville, South Carolina. Take another look. And Bats is one of the quickest guys, especially on, with his hands, and then just a great recognition to be able to find Jones there for the bucket. The NC State transfer, LeVar Bats, that's him with the ball. Marable and the double dribble. You saw him kind of get out of rhythm. Good job by Madol defending there for SC State. Well, when you go up against, all of a sudden you turn and you've got a 6'10 player there. Sometimes you lose control of the ball and that obviously caused the double dribble there. SC State trying to get back in this game. They've pulled within 14. Just one of their last 12 beyond the arc. They came into the ball game, a 27% three-point shooting team. Foul called out of the wing. As they foul number zero, Lamar Bats is And it'll go against Bats. Well, Bats had a great game last year against South Carolina State. Career high 40 points for the, the NC State transfer here at UNC Asheville. And uh, again, led the Big South in steals last year. You see how active he is. It's just a matter of can he get in a flow offensively because he hasn't really been able to do that uh, here in this young season. Yeah, came into the ball game today having scored six points in two games earlier. He made his first three of the season here in the third game. And you could see the look of relief on his face. Madol hustling, scrapping for the rebound, and out of bounds it goes over to UNC Asheville. And Bats showing you his versatility. Just like Thorpe, they can give Stephanie a breather at the point. Just on the floor, Deacon Heath. Or UNC Asheville gave it to Claiborne, and Claiborne with the travel. So, kind of, uh, kind of thing. It's got to be frustrating for Mike Morrell because there have been a lot of unforced turnovers as the Bulldogs close in on 20 in the game. That's their 17th. Yeah, just trying to do too much. And, again, you get caught up when you try to dribble penetrate too much rather than getting the offense by passing, get it moving around the perimeter, and then it can open up things inside. Felder crossing over on Heath and rejected by Claiborne. That's what he does. 32 blocks a year ago at North Carolina Central. And that's his third block of the game this year. I mean, this game. And again, that rim protector that you talked about earlier, Pete. Doubles his total on the season. He now has six in their first three games. I think they would take two or more blocks per game out of Claiborne. Folks looking to get it in to his fellow freshman Lawrence, who will be called for the travel. And you can see South Carolina State troubling to get the ball inbounds right there at a baseline out of bounds. And it's going to be interesting to see throughout this season how teams uh, are going to be able to work through some of the issues of not practicing that much. And they might not have too many out of bounds, side out of bounds plays because you can't practice that many. Reaching foul called. It'll go against Felder. The 
style of whistle being used by the officials has that European Olympic like sound to it and I'm just not fully engaged with that audibly I got to tell you I, uh, you're still the old school type of whistle that you like well, see, I'm just not hearing it at, <laughs> at the level that I that I'd like to I'm, I'm having to rely more on what I see look at the deflection right back to Claiborne well at least it's not the electronic whistle that we True. saw in some of the early football games yeah I was not a fan of those Little runner Stephanie No battled for the rebound. Folks getting it ahead. Lawrence saw the lane and he throws it down. And that's why we showcase Lawrence as uh, one of the players to watch for this game, just because of his athleticism like that as a freshman. Mike Morell calls the timeout. You can see the anger in his eyes, not happy with how his team reacted there. Ingalls College basketball and Latavian Lawrence center stage brings his team back within 12, but UNC Asheville still leading here at home. Latavian Lawrence just ran the floor, threw it down to pull his team back within 12 and well moving in a different direction or two, certainly common for this SC State team. Their third straight road game and Roughly eight of nine out of the gate here in December. Now the miles traveled you saw really not that bad in the big picture, but when you go close to 2,000 miles and you're on a bus, that's when it can add up. I mean, several of their road games are within the Palmetto State to Charleston, Clemson, to Columbia, but still uh, it can provide a little wear and tear as Tejon Jones out of the timeout. Nice play drawn up by Mike Morell. And that is life in the MEAC conference, which I know very well as a former assistant coach at Maryland Eastern Shore. So I've been on plenty of those bus rides. And travel the call on SC State. So another turnover. Tajon Jones now with 15 points. And that leads all scorers, bettering the dozen that he had against SC State in that overtime loss a year ago. Stephanie had it knocked away. Folks, they're looking to run. There's Lawrence in traffic. And again, South Carolina State, they're staying active. Even been down early, they're not giving in. They're, they're continuing to fight. And so Coach Garvin's got to be very pleased with their effort right now. Felder driving inside on Jones. What a nice move by, or I should say, Themis Folks rather. 6-1 going against the 6-6 Jones. And again, just showcasing that there's some young talent here at South Carolina State. Uh, with folks being able to nice drive right there and really nice balance with that left hand. Here's Jones again from downtown. Tejon Jones heating up. He's now four of seven from beyond the arc. And he was five of ten last weekend against Western Carolina from beyond the arc. So we know he can shoot. Closing in on a 20-point game. Adol could not handle the pass. The turnover by SC State, their 15th in the ball game. UNC Asheville remains ahead with a comfortable 55-39 lead as Ingalls College basketball continues after this. The free footlong when you buy two because it's footlong season. We invite you to join us right back here tomorrow, 2 p.m., women's action, Wofford and UNC Asheville. From here in Kimmel Arena, 2 o'clock, wherever you're watching today, Wofford and UNCA coming up on Sunday at 2 p.m. on Ingalls College Basketball as we roll on in the second half of this men's game with Richmond Weaver, Pete Yannity with you, a 55-39 advantage for the home team. They led by 16 at the break, and they're going to get it back and. You know, we're at that point in the game where you want to keep it crisp if you're Mike Morell's team. For that matter, Murray Garvin and SC State. But with this big lead, and you've, you've kind of kept the opposition at bay since about the 11-minute mark of the opening half, the last thing you want to see is sloppiness. So, without a doubt, you don't want to have any drop-off in effort. And as we can see there, Silas Mason being able to showcase that he's not going to drop off his effort because he wants to continue to be out on the court and play. Jock Madol with the first personal foul for him and now five on SC State and Silas Mason. Really nice job once again by Mike Morell drawing a play out of the timeout. Rebound comes down to Lawrence off the miss. 
in the corner. Felder with a man in his face. Madol inside. He's a big body at 6'10". They've got a seven-footer James we saw briefly earlier. So they've got some bulk, and that could be an issue for some of the teams they face once conference play begins for them. Jones, a 21-point game for Tejon Jones. And, and you, another three knocked down. And you look at this game and you look at st the stats and you don't see a whole lot of difference in some of these stats, maybe points in the paint, but it's one big difference that UNC Asheville has a guy who is taking over, and that's Tejon Jones. Good box out by the 6'7 Mason on the 6'10 Madol. Other end, though, Madol making Claiborne pay. It's the first time Claiborne's seen somebody about the same size as him, at least yeah. body-wise. Fultz over committing that time, and he'll pick up the personal foul. So, Themis Fultz with foul number three in the game. And what you love seeing from UNC Asheville bench, I know they're socially distanced right now, but uh, somebody, a, a player, picking up a charge, the whole bench is excited. The whole bench is going crazy, and Mike Morrell is jumping up and down. And that's the type of I, I team that, uh, the culture that Mike Morrell has been able to build here. Just everybody is involved even on the defensive side when they're not even playing. Yeah, you look at the 18 tournament overs by UNC Asheville, you apply the theory of pressing teams don't like to be pressed, but really they've done a great job getting it across front court. It's, it's in the front court where many of their turnovers have happened. Not a whole lot you can do about that as they let the big man eat down low, Evan Claiborne. Going off the glass, he continues to do nice work. A double-figure scoring day for him. Hard to defend Evan Claiborne just because of his size. And the turnovers for UNC Asheville, yeah, it's not so much from a turnover that they're you know, with a lot of defensive pressure. Just a lot of unforced errors for UNC Asheville that I know Mike Morrell wants to have them clean up. Edwards off the pump fake, battling inside Krosky. Gideon, cross-court pass, dangerous, knocked out of bounds by Jones with 14 on the shot clock. And, and that's how, that's the type of player that Jones is, is that he's sneaky, that it looked like Gideon can make that pass, and then all of a sudden Jones can get his lengthy arms in the passing lane. Bulldogs enjoying their largest lead so far in the game at 21 points. They were up by 16 at the break. Rideau, quiet second half, count it. Bats charged with the foul. So Floyd Rideau now with 15 of the game. He gets a chance to add to that. I know what you mean. He's a really good-looking player at 6'5". He definitely is, and they're being able to hit the pull-up jumper at the free throw line. And I know he struggled in the game against Clemson, but I've seen a lot of things uh, out of him because sometimes it's not all about being able to score or scoring in a particular game. It's some of the other things and just how he gets in the flow of the offense and just the rhythm that you can see uh, that he has right now. Free throws now, 5 of 10 in the game for the SC State team. Cody Jude, his first three attempt of the season as he's returned to action off injury and picking up where he left off a year ago when he shot... 38% from beyond the arc. That's a great way to start the season coming off of an injury for Cody Jude. And we talked about one of the things that UNC Asheville needed to improve on, particularly for this game, was their three-point shooting. Coming into the game, they were shooting 25%. They're shooting 47% right now, 8 of 17 during this game. Bats, he is so tough to try to penetrate on. And a timeout is called by the UNC Asheville Jr. Look at the <laughs> greeting he gets from his head coach, Mike Morrell. That is classic LeVar Bats who forces the steal. Asheville. And in the game now, able to add to his total with three. And so the Bulldogs have built the lead out to 65-43 at 22. And I would think after a week off and after two tough losses with eight minutes to go against UNC Wilmington last Friday, they had a they thought it was a comfortable lead, only to see that squandered and eventually fall 76-68. And then Western Carolina had the Bulldogs down by 20 points, about the 19-minute mark of the second half. Not only did Asheville come all the way back and even up, they took a late lead, a couple of points. Eventually it goes overtime on the Xavier Cork bucket with about three to go in regulation for Western Carolina. Catamounts 
came away with the win, but this is the, the kind of ball game UNC Asheville really needed this afternoon. Yeah, and even in that Western Carolina game, uh, losing the way they did, and you can pinpoint certain specifics looking at free throw shooting that UNC Asheville didn't shoot the ball well, but being able to come back from 20-point deficit, that had to make Coach Mike Morrell very happy that they didn't give up. And then now in this game, they're also showcasing that they're not in a situation of letting down their effort uh, and continuing to press, continuing to push. And then also you know that throughout the week they probably – shot a hundred (laughs) three-pointers you know in in practice and just continued focus on that and we're seeing just what a a big improvement they have been able to make so far in three-point shooting in this game and on the defensive end they've been forcing their share of turnovers today 17 turnovers forced and last year they averaged 16 a game It's at the basket where they want to be better defensively in the half court. A year ago for the entire season, UNC Asheville had just 73 blocks, but enter Claiborne and some others who've grown in that role. And so at this moment with four blocks today, they now have 17. So they're nearly a quarter of the way to that uh, total from a year ago here in game number three in terms of protecting the rim. And you do that, and that's going to translate into probably a few more wins this year. And Evan Claiborne is obviously the guy that is sparking that uh, with his size and uh, what a great uh, pickup that they've been able to have with the uh, the transfer from North Carolina Central, who, again, ultimately started at Cleveland State. You see Claiborne, number 10. He's closing in on his career high. He's matched his high, and this is third game with UNC Asheville with this team with 12. He had 14 against Mid-Atlantic while playing at North Carolina Central. Stephanie with the ball. Jude. Can't make it too straight from beyond the arc. Mason, unable to save it to a teammate. Edwards pushing the pace for SC State. And as we mentioned, Jude, he loves being able to play out on the perimeter. Even at 6'9", he he considers himself a true guard. Moore can't get the free throw line jumper to go. And Mason tripped up. Krosky didn't mean to, but he'll be called for the personal foul. And that'll be his second. So Silas Mason, the Greensboro, North Carolina native, played at Greensboro Smith. Good-looking freshman, and you can tell by the minutes he's getting today, Mike Mason. uh, Mike Morrell obviously likes what he saw out of Mason during practice this week. He'd been averaging only about nine minutes a game over the first two, but he has seen some extended time today. And Mason is a three-star prospect, again, out of Greensboro, North Carolina, and very long athletic type of wing and you can just see just how active he is one end to the other oh he wanted to end it with an exclamation point Rideau bats holding his ground but he'll be called for the block boy that would have been something defensive stop and then a throw down on the other end but it wasn't to be for Mason and that's a freshman just excited on a break season empty basket and wanted to create a highlight reel off of that just came up a little bit short there third foul on bats and I imagine his teammates are going to be talking about that for quite a while and making fun of him and it'll be a, a, a source though of actually camaraderie uh, that they can uh, you know yeah. be around and, and joke about that in, in a fun way and if you're Mason you want to get the ball in your hands again so you can make up for that <laughs> yes <laughs> as soon as possible to Sean Moore out high a senior out of Somerville gets it back or Krosky, rather, gets it on the wing. Won't get that one to go. Awkward-looking shot. Rideau battling inside on the rebound. Look at Jones go way up and pull it in. And a foul be called. And it was Krosky reaching around. 
Jones pulling down the rebound. He scored 21 today. Now his five boards came in averaging four. And it's guys like Jones and L.J. Thorpe, among others, who help out on the glass for this Asheville team. It's kind of an underrated part of their game. Definitely. And it's not all just about scoring for Tejon Jones. I mean, he averaged almost 14 points a game last year. And obviously having a great game offensively right now with 21 points and a chance to increase that. But it's all the other things that he can do with his athleticism that you just mentioned. Just being very active, not only on the rebounding side, but just in the passing lanes and, and again, applying that perimeter pressure. Folks, the freshman, that's Jones defending. Rideau goes past Mason. On the wing, Lawrence, a rainbow three, just the third Three-ball made three of the game for the SEC Lawrence. team. They're now three of 19 after they went just one of 14 beyond the arc against Clemson. Yeah, and they, they've been struggling from the three-point line, but if there's one guy that has been able to do it, that's Lawrence. Now, Claiborne again showcasing just what he can do as an enforcer with a nice dunk there. I've been double-checking the measurements all day long. This is 6'6 and nearly 230 pounds coming right at you. He plays like he's about 6'9", 6'10", and with this free throw, an opportunity to establish a new career high in points. And he does. And it's a 69-46 lead for UNC Astros. Took control of this game at about the 12-minute mark of the opening half. Folks directing traffic. James, the seven-foot freshman, using the window. Dallas James, seven feet, 235, comes from great basketball bloodlines. And, in fact, his dad played in the MEAC at sure Florida did. A&M. You remember him when you were coaching at Maryland Eastern Shore. I, I definitely do. He was a big mountain of a man even back then as a freshman and sophomore. He redshirted his uh, first year, but in 1995, 96, he, he, was, he was somebody to reckon with in the MEAC. And the pass not in time to avoid a shot clock violation. So it'll be a, another turnover, and so far in the game, 19. You see Dallas James's dad, we were talking about Jerome James, who then went on from Florida a m to play roughly a decade in the NBA. Had a couple of seasons in which he played in 80 games. He played his most games with the Seattle Sonics, teams that included Ray Allen. Here's his son going to work, can't get it to go that time. And his dad had one of the cool nicknames. Jerome James' nickname was Big Snacks. <laughs> I would assume because he maybe got a larger bowl of chips than everybody else. Tajon Jones, he has been snacking from the outside. Another three made, and then the turnover by SC State. Jones for a second straight Saturday, the junior guard at Oak Ridge, Tennessee for Asheville with 24 points. Six of nine, shooting from the three from beyond the arc. Again, he had, it was five of ten against Western Carolina. He's eight of 11 from the field right now with 24 points. He's really been the spark that Mike Morell and UNC Asheville needed. And a timeout called by SC State's Murray Garvin and Mike Morell having a conversation with Tajon Jones. We'll take a timeout as well. Ingalls College Basketball here at Kimmel Arena in Asheville. And the home team is a roller. We are keeping you and your family safe. Back to action, Bulldogs ball in a 72-48 game with Richmond Weaver. Pete Gannity with you. Jamon Battle, quiet day for him after that career high last week, but strong drive, can't get it to go. Lawrence, strong rebound for the freshman. Here's Rideau. Krosky deflects and finishing is more. That actually worked out a lot better than it appeared it was going to for SC State. It definitely did, and that's got to drive Coach Garvin crazy at times with some of those uh, type of plays. But for UNC Asheville, you mentioned that it, some of the players have been quiet, like Battle, who had a nice game against Western Carolina. But in all reality, I think Mike Morrell's very happy that, again, seeing the rotation that he's going to have a, a – 
nice bench to be able to pull on throughout the season where it might be different players that are being the spark each game. I believe the foul was called on battle and I'm sorry, Krosky rather, and for Krosky, that's his fourth. Each team with a player with four personal fouls, bats for SC State. And Stephanie able to knock down the free throw. And if there's one area that still, I know Mike Morrell is needing the Bulldogs of UNC Asheville to improve, that's free throw shooting. They've got to get better, especially, you know, as you get into conference play, these closer games, you're going to need to be able to hit the free throws. Bulldogs just 10 of 20 from the line. Inside battle. Can't get it to go down. Here comes SC State trying to scrap back into this. Folks will take it out of there. Rideau. Leads SC State with 15 points. Lawrence changing hands. Battle for the rebound. Moore inside. Let's see who they get on the foul. It'll go against Silas Mason. And he picks up his second. And you can see there they got bailed out with Rideau doing a lot of dribbling at the top of the perimeter before they tried to get it inside. Timeout on the court, a 23-point advantage in this battle of Bulldogs here at Asheville. Out of flavor, it would be Chick-fil-A's mac and cheese. I'm passionate about it. <laughs> Our sportscasting trivia question, we asked it earlier, 2009 under Eddie Biedenbach, UNC Asheville's Kenny George, 7'7", tallest player in college hoops. So what was his shoe size? Where does he line up in the Bob Lanier category? A 28, significantly bigger than the famed former NBA center who when he was playing in the league with the Pistons and others, Bob Lanier in the 70s, that's the only thing they ever talked about when you'd watch a game. And in fact, he ended up making a commercial, a beer commercial in uh, which they uh, joked about his shoe size. But Kenny George, 7 feet 7 tallest player in college basketball history. One inch taller than Manute Bowl, who played on the D2 level. 28. Man. That is something else, Pete. That's 28. Measure that with a yardstick. <laughs> a couple of free throws go down for Moore. And it's a 73-52 game. And you can see this is still an opportunity for Coach Garvin to really continue coaching this team there. Young team, inexperienced. So getting some more valuable minutes, uh, even in a game where obviously uh, the likelihood of coming back is very slim, but this is an opportunity for them to just keep improving. Stephanie thought he had it. LJ Thorpe, quiet day for the junior running down the rebound. And it's the same with Mike Morrell here too. Guys get tired of practicing against each other. They want to play in competition against some other team. And this is where you can really start picking up some film and picking up some opportunities to coaching, you know, against a, a, an opponent. Shot clock issue after the offensive rebound once again by a Bulldogs team that came in at plus one in the rebounding category. And so it'll be an inbound opportunity for battle. UNC Asheville will turn its attention now to ETSU, a visit over in the Cherez Cherokee Center, Harris Cherokee Center, Asheville, downtown, coming up on Tuesday night. Runner by Jones. Offensive rebound and battle inside. Shed two defenders. <laughs> Now, that looked like battle walk there, but he was able to at least maintain control and uh, get the, the easy basket. And Lawson got a hand on it. Goes right back to Moore, and he is rejected by battle. Two blocks in a row, and again, we're seeing that UNC Asheville's been very active uh, on the defensive side, not only just applying pressure, but even being able to uh, clean up the glass with some blocks. Krosky defending Thorpe outside. SC State will fall to 0-4. 
They get ready to go back on the road Monday night against the 49ers of Charlotte in their home arena. That time from the corner won't go for Jones. Falks pushing the tempo. Threads the needle on a nice pass past Jones and Moore That's able to finish. Well, that was a gutty pass in transition. That definitely was. Threaded the needle there and a great finish there as well but from Moore being able to use the rim to protect the shot. Travel the call or was it a timeout? I believe it was a timeout called by UNC Asheville simply as a substitution. Checking back in for Asheville number 30, Deacon Heath. Let's give you our Hercules tires. Strong move of the game. We've had a lot of options so far, but Evan Claiborne with the throwdown on a day in which he's established a new career high. 15 points for the transfer from North Carolina Central. It's our Hercules tires. Strong move of the game. Coming up on a minute to play. We saw Heath briefly in the first half. There is Thorpe, and he'll get into the scoring column. L.J. Thorpe at 12 last Saturday against Western Carolina, but hadn't been heard from offensively today. Look at that. Good rejection by Thorpe near the rim. Here's Battle. Continuing to clean up the glass with nice activity, being able to block that shot. And Thorpe picked up some early fouls, so he didn't get into a, a rhythm early on. It was nice to see him get in the scoring column there. And Stephanie just trying to milk down some clock. Heath from the wing. Boy, you know, his teammates wanted him to see, see him knock that one down. Definitely. Now, he played in 16 games his freshman year, uh, but each year just uh, with the quality of players coming in, he's been reduced playing time. I thought that caught rim, but they did not turn down the turn off the shot clock as Folks coming in steals it he'll get the layup as he took it away from Thorpe who was just trying to wind time down and that's probably the final bucket of the game and that's going to do it final seconds will wind down and the Bulldogs of UNC Asheville will put the wraps on a 77 to 56 victory against their fellow, fellow Bulldogs from SC State. They get revenge for last year's tough loss down in Orangeburg, and they even up the all-time series at four apiece. And great performance from UNC Asheville, just being able to hit the beyond the arc, shooting 41% from this game, and that was one of the keys that we had talked about, that they really needed to be able to improve from the three-point shooting. And again, just being able to apply the defensive pressure all game long, put South Carolina State uh, in an opportunity where they were causing some turnovers. Kind of a no-brainer for our Mako Medical player of the game, Tajon Jones. What great work he did on another big effort. Second straight Saturday, he hits 24-point scores. He was 5 of 10 last week against Western Carolina from beyond the arc and 6 of 10 this game against South Carolina State. So easy choice with Tajon Jones. Tajon Jones off to a good start to his 2020 and 21 season came in averaging 18 points to lead the way and that number will go up as always a whole lot of fun Richmond you and I are right back here at 2 p.m. on Sunday for women's basketball UNC Asheville Honey Brown's crew taking on the visiting Wofford Terriers UNCA now one and two in the season SC State falls to 0 and four again our final on Ingalls College basketball a 77-56 UNC Asheville win for Richmond Weaver Pete Kennedy this has been a presentation of ESPN <laughs>